Yesterday, the European Central Bank stated that the Irish economy was stable despite the downturn in the US and that house prices were now returning to realistic levels. Today tells a very different story as the uh, property website daft.ie releases the first uh, report of the year on property prices. Now their report indicates clear drops in asking prices and more properties remaining on the market for longer. So what's really going on and what does it mean for you if you're buying or selling a home now? To give us the facts and some helpful advice is Ronan Lyons, economist with the daft.ie and property expert Fiona McLaughlin of privateseller.ie. Thank you both very much for joining us this morning. I suppose it's a topic that rumbles on what's happening with the house market, blah, 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 blah. This report, anything new? Yeah, well, what we saw in 2007 was that asking prices were very much static throughout the year. And what was happening was people were putting up an asking price, let's say 300,000, and expecting to try and get 310, 315, 320. By the end of the year, they were putting up 300,000 still, but hoping for 280, maybe 285 if they were lucky. So they were using the asking price in a very different way. What's happened now in the first three months of the year is that they've started reducing asking prices around the country. And what's interesting is that the areas that are hardest hit are actually some of the top areas in the, in the country's markets. So if you look at, for example, uh, South County Dublin or Wicklow, in three months asking prices have fallen by 6 or 7%. So that's quite a big jump just for three months. But house prices for the last number of years have been unrealistically inflated in this country. You can't argue with that. It was crazy given the fact that there's no shortage of land to build in this country. We're not in Holland or anywhere like, anywhere like that, but the actual cost just kept growing and growing and growing. Completely unrealistic for young couples or first-time buyers to get into the market. Now, is it just stabilising now or can we see a drop in the future? There's a drop, and as I say, because the drop is biggest in the most expensive areas, that tells you something about, as you say, affordability. And what's interesting is if you look at somewhere like Sligo versus Donegal, what's happened in the last two or three years is that Donegal was by far the cheapest uh, county in that region, and that's now gone up. Uh, in, let's say in the last year, it's gone up by 6 or 7% in asking prices, where Sligo has actually come down by 5%. And the two are pretty much the same now. So you can see first-time buyers are looking around and getting the best value places for wherever they work. So whatever their commute is, they're saying, if I can go from Donegal to Sligo, there's no point in me having to live in Sligo. Mm. And we're seeing that around the country, that the cheaper areas still have demand, and it's the more expensive areas that are getting hit. Well, it's very confusing for, for ordinary punters like us, because uh, you, you have, for example, there was a difference of a opinion, I, I think is the way to put it, between the uh, Governor of the Central Bank and the IMF uh, in the papers yesterday. Now we have the ECB saying one thing and we have DAF.ie saying another. So you're kind of going, well, what is it? Is it stabilising? Is it going down? Is it going up? Is it a good time to sell? Is it, should, is it a good time to hang on? What do you do? Yeah, no, it is very difficult. There's a lot of messages coming out. And I mean, someone like the ECB or the IMF, they're trying to speak about, if, if not the world, certainly the ECB is trying to speak about all of the Eurozone. And it's very difficult for them to be able to tailor their message for Ireland and also have something that's relevant for Spain and for Germany and for everywhere else. But I mean, you're, you're, this is the first uh, um, um, sort of uh, benchmark report of the year, first quarterly report of the year. A lot of the industry, uh, state agents, auctioneers, uh, um, uh, brokerage houses will be looking at this and tailoring how they, 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 they work or how they project the rest of the year based on this. So what is it saying to the market? Well, it's saying that we need, because the, the number of properties for sale, the stock for sale at the moment is so high, prices need to come down. And what you see in somewhere like Dublin, there has been a correction in prices, and that the stock, the, the number of properties available to sell at the moment, is quite small relative to the number that you'd expect to see. And somewhere like Connacht and Ulster, there's an awful lot more properties out there for sale relative to the, the usual levels you'd see on the market. So to, 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 clear, the, to clear that stock, mm. to clear that excess, you're going to need to reduce your asking prices. Fiona, if I can ask you, what would it mean? Obviously, for, for, for me, I'm very, not very au fait on these matters, but if there's a lot of stock on the market and builders and developers, I mean, there's empty, half empty housing estates all over the country, drop the prices. They were getting huge profits anyway. If they drop, drop the prices by 10, 15 percent, it's not, is it going to do any harm? Will it stimulate the market again? Is that what needs to be done? Well, I think, you know, as, as Rona said, what we saw last year was that prices had stabilised. Now, a lot of people weren't selling. The sellers wouldn't give in last year to the buyers and actually sell the, pro the, the properties. What we've seen now is that they're actually starting to adjust the prices accordingly. So I think it'll be very interesting what actually happens uh, when we start to see the actual sales prices, you know, how, how far the drop actually is once we're looking at the actual sales prices rather than the, 
the asking prices. It's definitely a buyer's market at the moment and there is good news for them uh, in terms of, of buying properties now. Um, but for sellers, they really need to be aware of what properties are selling for in their area and to adjust their prices accordingly and to start competing with new developments that mm. are getting high profile out of dropping prices significantly. I feel very sorry for, I'm sorry Mark, anyone who queued up for houses, that they're in negative equity. Anyone who bought, let's say, two years ago and their, like their houses are after dropping hugely in value. I mean, it must be very disheartening for anyone like that. Well, unfortunately, that's, you know, that happens with the, the highs and lows of any property market. You know, when people are always, there's always going to be an unfortunate gap of people that will be caught by the, by the swing times or whatever. It, what it's looking like now is that, you know, we're heading towards the end of the, of the, of the, the fall down. Even the slowdown uh, in, in prices has actually, that has actually, the drop has actually slowed down itself. Um, it, it, drop points eight percent in January whereas before Christmas it had been dropping by over a percent a month so the sl so it's slowing down the the, the price fall um, it's interesting times you know there's the, as you said mark there's conflicting information out there the Irish monetary fund is saying that property prices are still uh, overvalued by 30 percent in Ireland however the central bank is saying that uh, yes but if you take the eight percent decrease that we had nationally overall last year including in the inflation rate that brings it to about 14 percent and if we're looking at five to ten percent slowdown this year that we're actually really looking at a stabilization yeah well our central bank is basically saying ah yeah no things are at the right level now but the truth of the matter is is this country went do lally where property was concerned yeah. for the last five years yeah. and when you're saying that people are having to drop their prices what you're actually saying is that people need to moderate their greed because that's actually yes. what this is Everybody people are sitting greedy. in four bedroom semis in nice parks in dublin yeah. saying oh well this house is worth a million and a half and yeah. the truth of the matter is is that it's probably worth seven hundred thousand but they can't get their head around this yeah because maybe they've taken out second mortgages for other property and they've committed yeah uh, they've used their equity in that house to commit yeah. themselves to something else so they're 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 caught between a rock and a hard place sure. but the truth of the matter is is that they need to get real about what their property is really worth absolutely and, absolutely. and, and buyers need to bargain very, very hard, and they're in a position to do that now, Roman. And, and, oh, sorry, and, go on to sorry I, would, I would just say about bargaining, bargaining hard, because I suppose I'm seeing the side where people are trying to sell their properties as well, and some of the buyers are making it very hard for them. They're being very aggressive. Now, you can bid low, but I think it's very, very important. It's, it's an important point to be, to have a little bit of respect for the seller, particularly trader uppers, if not the, if not the developers, and just developers, be aware that it's... Don't care it's about it's, them. Well, it's very hard to have respect for somebody easy. who's looking for a million and a half for a property that you know damn well worth maybe 900 to a Well, million. that person might have bought that property at not much less. You know, sellers have various different reasons for selling well, and it might have been money. greed that has, has, has increased the property <laughs> prices, Mark. <laughs> you might be selling at those prices, but it might have been greed that got those prices and inflated the prices up there. But not in all, in all cases. You know, no. and people did what they had to do in the property market and, and benefited from, from it as they, as they needed to or as they wished to at the time. I mean, that was, that was instinct. It would be contrary to your self-interest to go again what the market is allowing you to do. So, I mean, you know, sellers aren't all bad in, in trying to get the best price that they can for their property. It may be people like I was speaking to mm -hmm. yesterday who want to sell up and go and, and live in the, in the West with their, with their young kids and they want to be mortgage or with their, their grandchildren and want to be mortgage-free and all the rest. So I think what, what, you, what buyers have to do is to, be, is to be smarter and to make it easier for the seller to sell to them at a low price and not sort of to go in and say, right, well, you'll be so back to me in, in six <laughs> months' time. Kind well, of thing, the, you know? okay, fair enough. We'll have to leave it at that. But the truth of the matter is, that the auctioneer's books are are, are full at the Flooded. moment, and uh, nothing is moving. So it is no. There is there is some movement. You can see in the last couple of months, there's about a ten percent fall in the. Okay, in the, in the, the stock. Good time but, to be looking. Yeah.